come in. I'm Mrs. Sullivan, I'm Allison. I'm gonna be the nurse taking care of you today. I will be doing a musculoskeletal assessment. It's gonna take me about 12 minutes. Is now a good time? Perfect. Fantastic, thank you so much. I just finished my hand hygiene. I'm gonna go ahead and verify your name and date of birth on your pretend hospital band here. K. Sullivan, 10745. Wonderful, can you tell me the date today? November 26, 2020. Fantastic, can you tell me why you're here? Just not feeling as good as I should. Well, let's try to get you there then, absolutely. And can you tell me uh, where you are? I'm in the hospital. Wonderful. Well, that's not wonderful, but uh, the fact that you know that means that you're alert and oriented times four. So I'm looking at my patient. She appears her stated age. She is dressed appropriately for the weather and the situation. She is making eye contact. Her mood and her behaviors and facial expressions are all appropriate for the situation. She also, her speech is clear and coherent. She appears to be well nourished. She is sitting upright. Uh, her spine is straight and erect. When she walked in, she had a smooth, coordinated gait. She is able to bounce without the use of an assistive device. And um, additionally, she, all of her behaviors, and she appears dressed appropriately, but also her skin is appropriate to ethnicity with pink undertones. She's in no signs of acute distress. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the respiratory system. I'm looking at her chest wall is in a two to one ratio. Her costal angle is roughly 90 degrees. Looking at her spine, it is straight in midline. I don't see any scoliosis, lordosis, or kyphosis. Also, she has no work of breathing. Her respirations are even and symmetric. There's no accessory muscle use. And uh, additionally, she's not in tripod status. So the next thing we do is I'm gonna palpate the front of your chest wall. Do you have any tenderness? No. No tenderness noted. I'm gonna palpate your back. Any tenderness? No. No tenderness noted. I'm gonna have you just rotate your legs this way. Every time you feel my hand on your back, can you please say 99? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Fantastic, even vibrations felt throughout. I'm gonna place my stethoscope on your back and every time that you feel my stethoscope, can you please take a deep breath in and out? And I would be doing this on bare skin. This is the left upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Left lower lobe. Right lower lobe. Two more. Right lower lobe. And left lower lobe. Clear vesicular lung sounds heard throughout. I'll go ahead and have you sit face in front again. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just breathe in and out every time I move my stethoscope. Right upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Left upper lobe. Right upper lobe. Right middle lobe. This upper here. Left lower lobe. Right lower lobe. Clear vesicular lung sounds heard throughout. Looking at her neck, I don't see any jugular vein pulsations. I also don't see a carotid pulsation. So now I'm going to palpate her carotid artery. Very good. Two, almost three plus for the regular rate and rhythm. Very strong. Very good. Two, almost three plus of the regular rate and rhythm. Looking at her chest wall, I don't see any heaves or lifts. I also don't see an apical pulsation. So I'm gonna to listen to the five cardiac locations. First with my diaphragm and then with my bell. So it's gonna be second intercostal space, right sternal border. That's gonna be the aortic. Pulmonic. Herbs point. Just gonna go up and under. Tricuspid. And then mitral. And I'd be listening for a full minute. Pretend that a minute went by. So the apical pulse has a regular rate and rhythm, and also S1 and S2 are noted. So now I'm going to move on to my diaphragm, or sorry, my bell. Aortic. 
Philharmonic, Herb's Point, you know, Tricuspid, and then Mitral. And no S through S4 are noted, and also no murmurs are noted. And then I'm going to palpate their radial pulse. It's going to feel on the inside of your wrist. I won't be using my thumb. Two plus regular rate and rhythm bilaterally. So next up, uh, to start out with the uh, musculoskeletal system, first of all, I'm going to be looking at your joints. So looking at the joints of your hands, fingers, elbows, knees, and toes, I don't see any redness, I don't see any swelling, I don't see any joint formation or deformations. I also don't see, um, I don't see any uh, scars, any adhesions, or any lesions noted. Uh, so the next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to palpate a few of your joints, feeling for any crepitus. Very good. And there's no crepitus noted. Any tenderness? No. Wonderful. So no joint tenderness noted, no crepitus noted either. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check your range of motion in your upper and your lower extremities. So first off, starting with your neck. Can you go and help tilt your neck forward and then look backwards? Can you drop your right ear to your right shoulder and your left ear to your left shoulder? Can you shake your head no and shrug your shoulders? Fantastic. Full range of motion of the neck. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add strength against resistance to your neck. I'm going to do a little extra hand hygiene. I'm going to place my hand on your forehead. Can you go ahead and tilt your head forward? Very good. Go ahead and look down to your chest. Good. And then go ahead and look backwards again. Wonderful. I'm going to place my hand on the side. Can you take your ear to your shoulder? Wonderful. Ear to your shoulder. Fantastic. I'm going to place my hand on the side of your face and look towards my hand. So look that way with your whole head. There you go. Any other way? Wonderful. I'm going to put my hand on your shoulders. Can you go ahead and push up? Good. Now hold your hold your shoulders up and don't let me push you down. Very strong. So since you had full range of motion and full strength against resistance, five out of five, then uh, in the neck region. So the next thing I'm going to have you do is I'm actually going to have you do your shoulders. So for your shoulders, can you go ahead and take your arms up like a snow, like you're doing a jumpy jack or a snow angel. Take them back down. Very good. Can you go ahead and take your arms forward? And then take your arms back, and I know the chair is occluding there, but perfect. That's actually perfect. Wonderful. Can you go ahead and comb your hair? Now, don't you put your arms behind your back, low back, as if you're going in the slammer. Fantastic. So she had full range of motion, abduction, adduction, forward flexion, backward extension, external rotation, and internal rotation. So now to test your strength against resistance, can you hold your arms out in a T? Don't let me push you down. Don't let me push you up. Beautiful. Can you put your arms forward? Don't let me push you down. Don't let me push you up. Good. And put your hands behind your head, but don't interlace your fingers. Don't let me pull you apart. Very good. Can you put them behind your back? And again, don't let me pull you apart. Very good. So that's full strength against resistance. Now, and so that would be a five out of five or five plus. Can you take your arms forward? Can you bend your arms in, flexing at the elbow? Very good. And then go ahead and extend them back out like you're holding a cup of soup. Now put your palms to the floor. Very good. So that's full range of motion in the elbow. Go ahead and put your, actually take your arms up and can you do a strong arm, like you're a muscle man. Good, don't let me push you in and don't let me put you, pull you out. Wonderful, sets so full strength against resistance at the elbow, five out of five. For your wrist, can you wave bye bye like a toddler? Wonderful, can you shake it off like Taylor Swift? Fantastic, so full range of motion of the wrist as well. For your hands, can you go ahead and um, spread your hands out really wide? Now pull them together. Can you flex your fingers like this? Now look at your new mannequin. Wonderful. Now go ahead and take your fingers for party fingers. Go woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> Wonderful. And then take your thumb to each opposing finger. Very good. So full range of motion of the hands. Now can you squeeze on my hands? Very good. Very strong. Uh, almost broke my fingers in that. <laughs> so that'd be full strength against resistance of the hands. Five out of five in the upper extremities. So for the next portion, I'm actually going to have you stand up for a moment. And we'll actually have you step just right over here. Can you bend forward and touch your toes? Good. And then now go ahead and come up. Just take a breath. Good. Then go ahead and bend backwards a little bit. I'll be bend a little, lean to the right. Lateral lean to the left. And then we'll have you twist. Wonderful, full range of motion of your back. Then for your hips, I'll just move this chair out of the way for a moment. So for your hips, I'm gonna have you kick in multiple directions. So first I'm going to have you kick forward, good, now come back to center, kick backwards, good, so that would be forward flexion, backward extension, 
I'll be kick out. Good. And then now we're going to kick across a little bit. Good. So that's abduction and adduction. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to kick a little different. I don't know if you've ever seen anyone play hacky sack or do the stanky leg. Kick like this. Just in and out. Beautiful. So that was internal and external <laughs> rotation of the hips. So next, we're already standing with our knees in extension. So now I'll have you use this leg. And can you just kick yourself in the tush? Beautiful. And then stand right back up. So that's flexion and extension of the knees. So now we'll do the last portion on the chair again. You earned yourself that chair reward. So for the hips to do strength against resistance, I'm going to place my hands on the outside. Can you push your knees out? So push them out. Good. Now I'm going to switch my grip. Now squeeze in. Very good. So full strength against resistance of the hips. Now I'll place my hand on the top of your shin. I'll have you kick your knee up. Good. Now hold it there and now pull me back in. Wonderful. So taking one of your feet, can you go ahead and take your uh, foot and point it? Good. And then now take your toes towards your nose. Can you roll it in and then roll it out? Very good. So that's plantar flexion, dorsal flexion, inversion, eversion of the foot. So finally, check your strength against resistance. I'm going to have you place your hands on my feet like a gasp. Place my or sorry, place your feet on my hands. Okay, now go ahead and point down. Very good. Now keeping it there, now go ahead and pull your toes towards your nose again against this hand. Wonderful. So that's full strength against resistance in your hips, knees, and ankles. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and palpate your pulse. Very good. Two plus regular rate and rhythm bilaterally in the dorsalis pedis pulse. And so that concludes my assessment for today. Do you have any pain after all that? No. Wonderful. That's very great news. Is there anything I can get for you? No, I'm fine. Okay, wonderful. Well, I will give you your pretend call light. I'll make sure your bed, your chair is locked in the lowest position so that way you're not at risk for a fall. And I'll be back soon in about 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank and hygiene. You.